The 1st of April, and all those Robux that have been dancing in front of you during the Dokal are now fair game. In Britain, it's the start of the Robux season. For those who finish their Dokal early, it's also a chance to get out and properly look for deer. And for stalking guides, it's the start of the client season. Mike Maslin is out stalking with pro guide Tom Davis today. Mike has known Tom all his life. I think it's about 25 years. Yeah. He, he was about that big. <laughs> um, even that big, yeah. So he's come on quite a bit since then. <laughs> Charlie, yeah, a long time. Mike helps me out with putting up high seats, making high seats, and yeah. as a return favour, I take him stalking. It keeps me busy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds all good. Uh, it's first of April, so we're going to go out on the Robux. We're staying local. We're going to do the local valleys, and uh, yeah, I've been out the last couple of mornings just scanning, seen a few. So this morning, the camera's here. You won't see any. <laughs> <laughs> We do see some, and it doesn't take long. The thermal spotter reveals a group in a field which turn out to be three does. The one at the back is just about ready to pop. Row usually drop their kids from May onwards. If we can, we're going to start on Tom's buck cull programme today. We retreat and skirt around the does without disturbing them in order to get to a single deer that Tom has spotted in a neighbouring field. It's a buck, and a good one to take, but... It doesn't present a shot. Where it was, it wasn't safe to shoot anyway, and I don't think, I don't think it was going to come out for a shot anyway, because it was on the edge of the wood. I think the doze had spooked and it, yeah, triggered that one. But yeah, yeah. But it's nice, nice morning. That's been a stunning morning. Yeah, it's great. Springs here, birds are singing, and that is hunting. Next stop, and we hit row mother load. All highly visible, but unfortunately not on Tom's ground. Uh, we saw what I saw yesterday. But not where you saw them? No. Okay. <laughs> so all my... Uh... It's a little bit like I'm playing all the right notes. Yeah. But not necessarily. Yeah, so all that hard work was for nothing. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we've seen... I don't know, we've, we've, there's another two over there now. 16, That's out grazing. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, seven. 17, including the buck that's off the side of the valley now, which is currently chilling out. We need, we need to just make sure that's out there. We've seen a lot of deer. <laughs> the next animal that Tom spots is a buck sitting in the corner of a primrose field, certain it is in a safe place. As we stalk in, we see why. The ground subtly undulates and we keep losing sight of it. Then we get to the place we can see its antlers about 30 metres away. It's so happy where it is, it takes no notice when Tom starts making noises to move it. Eventually, Tom decides to move even closer. And, of course, that's the moment that the buck moves on. I mean, the way he was, like, we had to do something. He doesn't, you know, he didn't have a care in the world. We were there until we moved. Anything to spook him, they're not going to hang around. And when he stood up, he wasn't even presenting a shot anyway, was he? No, he, he was facing away, anyway, looking back over his shoulder. Yeah. Um, that's a shame. But he's a nice animal. You know, old, old buck. I've got pictures of him in velvet last year, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, he's a nice big six point. Buck. It's, it's about as nice as they get here in Dartmoor. At this time of year, it's easy to see the difference between young bucks and old bucks. Tom explains how. What you're looking at, you know, the start of the season, you'll be looking at the older animals will clean up first with velvet, and then the younger animals follow. And then you're looking at coats as well. The younger animals will change their coats first, and the older animals follow. Um, so that's, that's a good way of identifying age of animals this time of year. You know, it is a good indication with the velvet and the coat changing. Now it's off to a campsite, not to set up a tent, though Tom's stalking guests do stay there, and there's a link to it in the description below. It is set in Devon Woodland and Tom stalks there. We find our first bucks in a small plantation. Again, there is no clear safe shot here, so we have to move around and onto them. This is where Tom and Mike become a victim of woodland. The trees shed long, snappy sticks, and that gives away the position of the stalkers to the deer. There's not a lot we could really do there. Get on the sticks now. Quick, 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 quick. Where they were, no matter what angle, there was just a brow continuously. But well, we did have what we thought was a safe shot, but then got a glimpse of, well, it's using lambs behind. It's not worth risking that shot. 
So we made a manoeuvre, which is about the only manoeuvre we could do. Yeah, we're just stepping on and stuff all the time. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, not easy. We are beginning to lose the light. Tom spots one more animal in the campsite woods. Yeah, the other side, through that. There's one gap in that head, the tree. Right through that gap. I think I've got a buck, Charlie. I think there's a buck in there. They move around to look more closely and disappointment. Back at the ranch, we hold the post-mortem chat, despite the lack of actual mortem. We've seen plenty of deer today, I think. Do you feel your kind of season is laid out in front of you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't even touched a fraction of my stalking ground either. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's looking promising, definitely, yeah. Nice um, bucks as well, some really good bucks today. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, I'd, yeah, I've done a count, I think it was in 26 row today. Several bucks amongst them, some nice ones. One of the reasons we see so many animals today is Tom's use of thermal. It seems that technology has made finding animals easier, while stalking into a shooting position is harder. Tom might be the expert, but Mike has been stalking a lot longer. I don't disapprove of progress like that, um, but I used to stalk with some really good, I mean, there's me saying in the, my 60s, but older stalkers, and they were so gentle and quiet, and they stalked in a very methodical manner. Mm. I guess they had to, they didn't have thermal then. Some of the deer we've seen today, you never would have seen them without thermal. No, no way. No, without a doubt. No, no. no way. No. No. No, no. You know, even that buck that you know got away this morning, the last one we saw, you know, we to see that for the binos, unless we actually stalked that valley, we never would have seen that. No. No sense. But it gives you the opportunity yeah. to cover more ground. You, you know, you can, as long as you're quiet and moving fast, it's okay. You know, you're not stomping and crashing through trees and whatnot like we did today. But. <laughs> 26 rows seen and none shot. That's a worthwhile day. For the benefit of the freezer, Mike comes back the following evening and Tom makes it doubly worth his while. First, there's this buck in velvet. Then a long shot on another buck, just as the light is fading. If you would like to go stalking with Dartmoor Deer Services, find Tom on Facebook or Instagram. Links in the description below. And if you're a Field Sports Nation member, you can win a morning and evening outing with Tom. <laughs>